Alcatraz. The name alone sent shivers down the spines of even the toughest criminals. Surrounded by frigid, choppy waters, this island prison was inescapable. It was known as the end of the line. Only the most dangerous and desperate were sent there. Alcatraz wasn't like other prisons. It was designed to break the spirit. The guards were tough, the rules were strict, the isolation was crushing. Inmates lived with the constant fear of the guards, the other prisoners, and the island itself. The cold, the fog, the howling wind, it all added to the feeling of hopelessness. Alcatraz was a place where hope went to die. But even in the darkest corners of Alcatraz, stories of resilience flickered. Stories of men pushed to their limits, tested by unimaginable hardship. These are their stories. Life on Alcatraz was a monotonous routine. Each day was the same, a relentless cycle designed to break the human spirit. The day began before dawn. Inmates woke to the clanging of bars. Breakfast was a hurried affair. No talking was allowed. Then it was off to work. Some inmates worked in the prison industries, making clothes or furniture. Others cleaned, cooked, or did laundry. Work was not a privilege. It was a way to control the inmates. Lunch was another silent meal. Afternoons were for exercise or solitary confinement. The library offered a brief escape into books, but even there, freedom was an illusion. Dinner was followed by lockdown. Inmates were confined to their cells. They had nothing but their thoughts and the echoing silence. Sleep was often interrupted by nightmares, a constant reminder of their bleak reality. The worst punishment on Alcatraz wasn't physical. It was mental. The isolation was crushing. Inmates were cut off from the outside world. They had little contact with family and friends. The silence was deafening. The only sounds were the waves crashing against the rocks, the cries of seagulls and the clanging of prison doors. The constant watch of the guards was unnerving. They were always there, watching, waiting for any sign of trouble. The psychological toll was immense. Some men broke down, others withdrew into themselves. Hope was a dangerous thing on Alcatraz. It could drive a man mad. The guards did everything they could to crush it. They wanted the inmates to believe that they were forgotten, that there was no escape. Despite the odds, some inmates dared to dream of escape. Over the years, there were 14 attempts involving 36 men. Most were caught, some were shot. The most famous attempt was in 1962. Three men, Frank Morris, John Anglin, and Clarence Anglin, vanished from their cells. They used spoons to dig through the concrete walls. They left behind dummy heads made of soap, hair, and paint. The escape was ingenious. The men used raincoats to make a raft. They even had life jackets fashioned from stolen materials. Their fate remains a mystery. The official story is that they drowned, but their bodies were never found. The escape became a legend, a symbol of the enduring human spirit in the face of overwhelming odds. It proved that, even in the most hopeless of places, hope never truly dies. Alcatraz, often referred to as the Rock, was considered inescapable. The prison was surrounded by the cold, treacherous waters of San Francisco Bay. The currents were strong, and the water temperature was frigid, yet these men were undeterred. They meticulously planned their escape for months, gathering materials and devising their strategy. The dummy heads they left behind were so lifelike that it took guards hours to realize they were missing. The raft they constructed was a marvel of ingenuity, pieced together with raincoats and other stolen items. To this day, the fate of Morris and the Anglin brothers remains one of the greatest mysteries of Alcatraz. Did they perish in the icy waters, or did they manage to reach freedom? Their story continues to captivate and inspire, a testament to the unbreakable will to seek freedom, no matter the cost. Section 5. The Battle Against Boredom, Life Beyond Bars Life on Alcatraz wasn't just about punishment. It was a complex system designed to manage and control the inmates. It was also about control. The guards had to maintain a delicate balance of authority and order. The guards used a variety of methods to maintain order and prevent escape. Security measures were stringent and ever-present. One method was to keep the inmates busy. Inmates were assigned jobs to occupy their time and minds. They worked in the prison industries, making clothes, furniture and license plates. These tasks were not just busy work, they were essential to the prison's operation. They cooked, cleaned and did laundry. These daily chores were crucial for maintaining the prison's functionality. Work was a way to keep them occupied, 
to prevent them from plotting escape. Keeping the inmates busy was a strategic move to reduce idle time. In their free time, inmates could read, write letters, or listen to the radio. These activities provided a mental escape from their harsh reality. There was a library with a surprisingly good selection of books. Reading offered a way to travel beyond the prison walls, if only in their minds. They could also take classes in art, music, and even public speaking. These classes were more than just hobbies. They were lifelines to personal growth and expression. These activities were designed to give the inmates a sense of purpose. Engaging in meaningful tasks helped them maintain a sense of dignity. They were a way to maintain morale and prevent boredom, which could lead to trouble. Keeping the inmates engaged was crucial for the overall stability of the prison environment. Section 6, The Birdman of Alcatraz, An Unexpected Legacy One of the most famous inmates at Alcatraz was Robert Stroud, known as the Birdman of Alcatraz. He was a convicted murderer who developed a passion for birds while in prison. Stroud was allowed to keep birds in his cell. He studied them, cared for them, and even wrote books about them. His work earned him a strange kind of fame. He became known as an expert on bird diseases. However, Stroud was a complex and troubled man. He was also violent and unpredictable. He was never granted parole and died in prison in 1963. Stroud's story is a reminder that even in the most desolate of places, life and even beauty can be found. It also highlights the complex and often contradictory nature of human beings. Echoes of the Past, Alcatraz's Enduring Impact Alcatraz closed as a prison in 1963. It was deemed too expensive and too isolated to operate. Today the island is a national park. Visitors come from all over the world to learn about its chilling history. Walking through the abandoned cell blocks one can almost hear the echoes of the past. The clanging of cell doors, the muffled voices of inmates, the cries of seagulls. Alcatraz stands as a monument to a dark chapter in American history. It is a reminder of the human capacity for both cruelty and resilience. It is a place where the past is always present, a haunting reminder of the price of freedom. Beyond the bars life after Alcatraz, for the inmates who survived Alcatraz, life after prison was a challenge. Many struggled to adjust to the outside world. They had spent years in isolation, cut off from family and friends. Some found it difficult to find work. They were branded with the stigma of Alcatraz. Others struggled with the psychological scars of their imprisonment. The nightmares, the paranoia, the fear, it never truly left them. Yet some managed to rebuild their lives. They found jobs, started families, and became productive members of society. Their stories are a testament to the power of the human spirit to overcome even the most traumatic experiences. Alcatraz in popular culture, a lasting fascination. Alcatraz has captured the imagination of the public for decades. It has been featured in countless books, movies and TV shows. The island's eerie atmosphere and notorious history make it a perfect setting for thrillers and horror stories. Movies like Escape from Alcatraz and The Rock have cemented the island's place in popular culture. These films often portray Alcatraz as a place of violence, brutality and escape attempts. While these depictions may be exaggerated, they reflect the public's fascination with Alcatraz. The island represents the ultimate battle between good and evil, between freedom and confinement. A chilling reminder, the price of freedom. Alcatraz may be closed, but its legacy lives on. The echoes of its past still resonate within its cold stone walls. It serves as a chilling reminder of the price of freedom. Each cell tells a story of confinement, of dreams deferred, and of lives forever altered. It is a symbol of the dark side of the American dream, a place where hope went to die. Yet, within these walls, there were also glimmers of humanity and resilience. But it is also a testament to the resilience of the human spirit. The inmates, despite their circumstances, found ways to endure, to survive, and sometimes to thrive. Despite the harsh conditions, the isolation and the despair, the inmates of Alcatraz never gave up hope. They clung to the smallest fragments of their humanity, finding solace in memories, letters, and even in the routine of prison life. Their stories, though often tragic, are a testament to the indomitable will of the human spirit. These narratives of struggle and endurance continue to inspire and remind us of the strength within us all. Today, 
as we walk through the empty cell blocks of Alcatraz, we are reminded of the importance of freedom, the value of hope, and the enduring power of the human spirit. The silence of these corridors speaks volumes about the sacrifices made and the lessons learned. We are left to ponder the true cost of confinement, both for those imprisoned and for society as a whole. The legacy of Alcatraz challenges us to reflect on our own values and the lengths we are willing to go to protect our freedom.